is ABC Radio Brisbane. We say, lest we forget, but now we're going to take you to the National War Memorial that no one, it seems, remembers. The National Australia remembers Freedom Wall and the Brisbane Botanic Gardens was unveiled in 1995. A few years later, on the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, people feel it's largely been forgotten. Peter Racy is a Wakeley resident, campaigning to bring new life to this monument. So, Peter, I can't say it's entirely forgotten because you've taken a keen interest in it. Can you just tell us what's so significant about this Freedom Wall? Well, what drew my interest to it in the first instance was the fact that after it opened, my father uh, visited it uh, around Easter time with his uh, ex-army mates then went off to the United Services Club. Um, I didn't know what they spoke about, who they were up here seeing, um, and it was not until much later when I was doing some work uh, in the legacy of Expo 88 because the wall overlooks um, the World Expo 88 Rainforest Grove, and I sort of thought to myself, oh, I must go over and try and find the Remembrance Wall. And it was about two and a half years ago. Um, and the first time I tried to find it, uh, I got lost, to be honest. Uh, but I eventually did find it uh, with the aid of the information kiosk. Um, and my interest was just peaked uh, from that. Uh, partly in embarrassment uh, that it wasn't more attentive to my father, who had, uh, had since passed away. Um, and it's just a crying shame. I mean, I'm actually, as we speak, standing uh, in front of the tees um, on the memorial wall, and I'll, I'll just give you a feel of the breadth and the depth of feeling here. Uh, Hazel Underwood, Rands, proud to serve her country, November with love. Uh, Helen Upton and family, an appreciation of the freedom won by father and uncle, Cornelius John. It, there are also a lot of very specific um, memorial statements in relation to people who passed away during the war. And it's those sediments, I think, that really deserve better treatment, mm. to be honest. So it's... I mean, we're in the 75th year of the anniversary. There are only 9,000 out of 600-odd thousand uh, service men and women who are still alive. They are passing away at the rate of 450 a month approximately. Um, and, you know, another three to four years, there won't be any left. And I just think that while they are alive, we should be honouring them. And this memorial war um, just needs a, a rebirth. And the more I look into it, I mean, the foundation stone that Tom Sacker and the then Lord Mayor laid has gone missing. And so I'm, it's I'm, missing its foundation stone, a National War Memorial without a foundation stone in the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. How did this happen, Peter? Well, I suspect in that particular case, that was simply uh, an exercise of uh, the construction because when it was originally announced by the Minister Conf Sacker, and it was his brainchild back in 95, in July 95 to be precise, um, the uh, they had hoped to get 100,000 individuals and they only ended up getting about 14,500 but they also then got about 1,000 plaques from mm -hmm. service organisations, from councils, from schools, from legacy um, groups, from war widows and so in effect there are tributes here to the millions of Australians. So in one way they were far successful, in another they were less successful. So it, the wall had to go through a complete redesign mm. to take into account the fact that the number of physical plaques that are housing wasn't 100,000, it was only just under 16,000. You're on ABC Radio Brisbane if you've just joined in. Peter Racy is with you, telling you about a memorial, the National Australia Remembers Freedom War Memorial at the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. It's uh, missing a foundation stone, seems to have dropped off uh, the collective consciousness. Peter, what do you want to happen? Has the Department of Veteran Affairs been approached? Will they fund an upgrade? Um, yes, they have been approached. Um, 
and their attitude. So it's a little bit like between a mix of Basil Fawlty, Monty Python, and Yes Minister, because when you speak to them, um, they are perfectly happy that the war is performing its function. It's a memorial war, um, and they uh, aren't taking into account that it takes up about 4% of the Botanic Gardens, and it has maybe three to four visits a month. And so, you know, it's really not achieving the purpose of being a memorial mm. uh, to the sacrifice that got us the peace. Um, and so, you know, I just had this, I just had a, had a series of wonderful, you know, conversations with them that really go around the circle, but don't actually go anywhere. As they say, well, it's, you know, perfectly functioning. It's beautifully maintained by the Brisbane City Council. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the people that are visiting it are very happy, and they just really completely and utterly miss the point that, um, A, hardly anyone knows about it, B, hardly anyone visits it. Mm. Um, and so, well, what is the point of having it if you're not prepared to invest and make sure it's really keeping, um, you know, in its presence in place? Modern requirements. Peter Racy, I understand that you will be pursuing this case very passionately, as you have with so many other aspects of Brisbane's past, and uh, I look forward to catching up with you for the next instalment in this story. Thank you for your time this morning. And Merry Christmas to you and your listeners. Merry Christmas. Peter Racy, a Wakeley resident who is keen to go to support for, it sounds like, a bit of a restoration of the National Australia Remembers Freedom Wall in the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. We'll uh, keep an eye on this story. You're on ABC Radio.